Prec is one of the most important power management features that Xeon RM doesn't have for SPA, unlike Xeon on the 680 system. So, uh, before digging into the CPU Prec internals, I would like to introduce myself, my team. So, we have a team of developers based in Kiev, Ukraine. We are focusing on many topics, Xenon ARM Renaissance Generation 3, board support and maintaining Xenon real-time power management, OPT here, Android hardware abstraction layers. What is more, we are members of Azure Engineering and pushing for Xenon usage there. Also, we are developing the Yocto based build system for multi-domain distribution. Also, we are streaming all our work to Xen project, to Linux kernel. You can see us at GitHub. So today I will cover next topic. So I will speak about why the CPU frag is needed, why it is so important, why Xen needs to be involved in CPU frag. I will speak about the current status. Uh, then I look through the possible approach for the CPU frag in Xen. So after that, I will speak about the CPU frag PLC based upon the approach I have chosen. After that, I will show you a number so you will be able to see the real benefit of the CPU frag. After that, I will speak about the improvement which was proposed in Xen main years. So I believe that all of you know what the CPU frag is intended for. Yes, it is a power management feature for controlling CPU frequency on the fly, depending on the actual needs, taking into the account uh, CPU utilization, CPU load. So, what benefit is expected from the CPU thread? <laughs> Xen becomes more popular in embedded world this day, and the demand for, for the CPU thread comes from this world, where the ARM platform are widely used. So, there are two orthogonal things that Xen helps, CPU thread can help with performance and power savings. Power savings for battery powered devices, automotive, embedded, mobile, whatever. It doesn't make any sense to write around CPU at high frequency when not needed. These devices might be as power efficient as possible in order to preserve uh, installed battery. So also running CPU at high frequency all the time may heat up CPU, reducing its life. So on the other side, when we deal with heavy use cases, we want to get appropriate benefit from tests from the system. We want to get appropriate performance. And CPU frag allows to benefit from the CPU two of frequencies if board supports them. So without then it is not possible. We can't just set high frequency from the bootloader and let the CPU to run at such high frequency all the time. So there must be some entity in the system to scale the frequency down from time to time, as this entity is a CPU frag. So, uh, why Xen needs to be involved in CPU frag? So, why don't just pass through CPU frag stuff to, let's say, domain zero or hardware domain and let them work as they work on parent system without Xen. So why Xen needs to be involved? The answer here is the CPU virtualization is done by the provider and the abstract DSOS doesn't know anything about the PCPUs because it runs on DCPUs only. So it's quite clear that we can't create working solution without modifying Xen at all. It's only the Xen single system component who has all required information. So, current status. As I said above, Xen on x86 has CPU frag out of the box, but RM support is missing so far. So, there are two possible modes. Domain zero based CPU frag and we provide the basic CPU frag. So this mod differs in where CPU logic is implemented. 
So the hypervised embedded refresh is more appropriate to be used in array of embedded platforms because the main zero based refresh implies hard CPU pinning and having CPU refresh infrastructure in the domain zero. But uh, this requirement may conflict with requirement of thin domain zero or non-linux domain zero. So he provides the way that CPU refresh. So as you can see, the CPU refresh infrastructure in CN is similar to Linux. So two scaling drivers for x86 are supported. So also it is a hypervised by the CPU track, it just requires the main zero to be involved, but not to scale to CPU, just to parse SCP tables and upload information to Xen and controlling CPU track parameters in runtime via Xen Xen tool. So the ARM support is missing so far. It was to mention that there was an attempt from Alexander Mitrishin from Global Logic to create support from ARM, which included an activity for making SPI specific CPU frame stuff more generic. I will consider this approach down the presentation. So, possible approaches of CPU frame for ARM. So, before digging into the possible approaches, I would like to draw your attention to the one problem, which is the frequency changing interface. So CPU frag just make a decision and issues pattern dependent call, which contains frequency the CPU should run with. But the possible question, who should actually scale the, the, the CPU? CN or hardware domain offer dedicated IP controllers from a power management coprocessor. So the list of required for the very first components, acquired B. You can see it's modern Linux implementations, so how many components are involved in the VFS? Core, regulator framework, demo framework, pattern drivers, so and the possible approaches we are about to consider differ exactly in frequency change in the phase. So Send plus Havidon solutions. Hardware domain scale to CPU. Alexander Mitrishin from Global Logic proposed a split model where front end driver in Xen interacts with back end driver in hardware domain in order to scale the CPUs. But this solution hasn't been accepted by Xen community yet, and the uh, start of this work, I would say, it's freeze. So, pros, pros of this approach. The main beauty of this approach is that we don't need to port a lot of things to Xen. So this solution is going to be generic. Cons. The way how the Linux backend driver implemented won't be acceptable by Linux community, so the design is definitely needed. So complex communication interface between Xen and hardware domain. Sys calls, hyper calls, custom device kit bindings, uh, etc. Uh, it is a not completely safe solution. Letting uh, guest to air or even, or even hardware domain manage device power management is one thing, but letting it manage CPU is a big risk. Second. On CN solution, CN scales the CPU. So, quite clear that we need to port all the VFS related stuff for the CPU frag scaling drivers in CN to be able to actually realize certain OPP, OPP operation performance point, which is a failure voltage and frequency. So, pros. It is a not generic, but safe and more architecturally cleaner solution than previous one. Having all in here, we don't depend neither on potentially malicious health domain nor on drive bugger run cons. We are going to end up having a lot of code in here. 
since we will have to keep as many scaling driver in sand, as many patterns we want to support. So, another enormous development effort is needed to get the support in and maintain it. Since the list of required components is quite big. Simplus SCP solution. So it is a yet another approach based on the popular at the moment ARM SCMI protocol. So ARM SCMI, System Control Manager, System Control and Management Interface protocol follows the recent trend in the industry to provide an embedded microcontroller to abstract power and other system tasks. So the SCMI protocol is used between this embedded microcontroller, which is the SCP in terms of protocol and the application processors. Usually, CP provides a lot of services, and one of the services is the performance management, which includes DBFS for CPU core cluster, what we actually need for the CPU fair. So the protocol Protocol specification is officially published, so and uh, SCMI related drivers upstream to Linux kernel. So SCP scale PCP use. So the generic idea of this approach is that there is some firmware which being a server runs on dedicated IP core provided SMI services. On the other side, there is a scaling driver in Xen, which being a client consumes these services. So the CPU frag scaling driver is in Xen, just signals for PP change request directly to the CP. That's all. So requirements. It's worth to say that some mailbox IP needed for IPC between SCP and Xen. Also, the main point is that some corresponding firmware must be present, which provides SMI services. This is the main requirement. So, but uh, what to do if that dedicated IP core is absent on target platform? or performs other than power management tasks. So what to do? Is the blocker for us or not? No, the lack of dedicated IP core isn't a blocker. So Andre Prejevara SMC triggered mailbox approach with his pod, POC pod for all winners demonstrated that. So the generic idea of this approach is to teach firmware which runs on very same application cores as Xen runs, but in the L3 exception level, to perform SCP functionality and provides SMI services and use secure monitor calls for communication. Uh, such, such solution is going to be a good compromise for the ARM platforms which don't have a dedicated IP core for being SCP, but have firmware running in trust software layer. This is actually ARM trusting firmware. So the SMC triggered mailbox driver emulates mailbox which signals transmitted data via SMC instruction. So the mailbox receiver is implemented in firmware and uh, returns data and then returns execution to the non-secure world again. So this is a completely synchronous case. So, pros of this approach. Uh, I think it is a secure and architecturally clear solution. So, there is no reason not to trust uh, firmware running in trust software layer or not to trust firmware running on dedicated uh, embedded controller in SOC. So, it is going to be a generic solution since we the only mailbox driver is going to be one platform-dependent component. 
So easy to implement uh, this approach comparing to the previous one. Once the common path was implemented, it would be too easy add support for new board. So what we need to add to support for the platform is a simple mailbox driver to implement a minimum set of functions. That's all. So no complex communication interface, just SCMI protocol. And the last one, only this approach allows to test guest input in CN with minimal modification in quota. So, cons. So the main cons is that a firmware. So the corresponding firmware which provides the CMI services might be present. It's a main requirement. So it can be either firmware running in EL3 exception level or run on dedicated IP core, but it must be present. So next cons is seems is CPI related only, but so for the if if we use a CPI protocol, a CPI is also ARM protocol, system control and power interface. I would say it is a early version of a CMI protocol. It is uh, generic ARM and also officially published, also upstreamed, but it is let's say early version of a CMI protocol. And for this SCPI protocol, probably we need to emulate all SCPI requests in CN for the CN to be an SCP for guest. So, as you may understand, <laughs> I have already chosen a CN plus SCP solution. I think that the solution is more appropriate across all proposed solutions. So, it samples a CPI of our choice. So, CPU frag POC. So, main points. <laughs> ARM SCPI. So, I built this POC on top of ARM SCPI. Why I didn't use ARM SCMI? So, when I was doing the research, the SCMI Linux support was missed. And, uh, Next, the range of capabilities the SCPI has was enough to implement this POC, but we will probably move to the SCMI, so, or since could support both protocols, it is discussable. So, next, SMC triggered mailbox. So, I borrowed the idea of SMC triggered mailbox driver with which emulates mailbox, which signals transmitted data via SMC call. So the reason was mm, the lack of dedicated IP core on platform I worked with. And this idea looked reasonable to me. So modified firmware. It was feasible to me to modify untrusted firmware since the official PSP release I used provided both firmware and software. So in classic embedded scenario, it is going to be feasible as well, where the same entity provided both firmware and software. So, just a few seconds, just a few sentences about what we have if you run with uh, vendors PSP with CN and without CN. So, without CN. So, the CPU feature works out of the box if we run uh, Linux from Vendor's BSP. So, the BSP release for Ergargen uh, G boards comes with CPU frag enabled in Linux. It used DT CPU frag, this device to buy the CPU frag. So, the device related properties are described in the device key and driver extracts this information. So, you can see the example of real CPU mode. So, but we run, if we run that Linux from BSP as a domain zero or as hardware domain, we get the refract feature broken. It is expected actually, so there is no issue. Since when Sen then creates a device 3 for guests, it inserts only dummy CPU nodes 
and the old developers related with properties which the original one, original mode has, are not passed to the guest device street. So this is the example of guest the CPU mode. So there is no no clock supply, no OPT, no clock property. So we get the different feature properties. <coughs> okay, so I will skip the POC implementation details, unfortunately. A lot of time needed to describe all of them, but the corresponding presentation slides are present, so you will be able to read them after. So this slides demonstrates what I had from the beginning. So this slide demonstrates what I got in the end. Uh, so proposed simple uh, SCP solution is not limited by only using ARM trust firmware for providing services. So this ARM platform you are working with already has a dedicated IP core providing services, then even better. So the only one thing you need to add to support support in CEM to benefit from the CPU frag enabled then is to a simple mailbox driver. So focus on your mailbox driver only. So the important note here is that the CEM tool stack wasn't modified. So in order to minimize changes in the common code and to retain current interface, the SCP based project was implemented in a way to be absolutely okay with SCPI performance states. So the CEM TM tool works out of the box on RM. So status. Uh, this POC works, it is stable enough, no random freezes, crashes, it is possible to control CPU frag parameters in runtime. So I have already sent RC patch series to the CN mailing list which, which initially implements this solution. So uh, the patch series looks quite huge from the first glance, it pulls a lot of third-party code from Linux, uh, but I believe that the number of lines for it has to be significantly reduced, so there is definitely a way for optimization. So, as an example, you can see the CN boot log and uh, output of the CN PM command. So, benchmarking results. It is a quite interesting paragraph. So the target hardware is a Renaissance Salvator X4 with RR generation 3 S3 SOC. It is a quite powerful SOC. Four Cortex A57 cores, four Cortex A53 cores, Cortex R7 core, so mm, target software. I decided to use our demo system, uh, which was, sh was shown at last CES. So it is a virtualized system based, uh, pa uh, powered by XM hypervisor and consists of four domains. Sync domain zero, there is, there is no hardware drivers at all, generic ARM V8 Linux. Cluster domain, which is a automotive grade Linux based on a Renaissance based IBI domain, which is an Android offer, and a cloud services domain, which is a generic ARM VM Linux. And this is all on top of their with CPU frag patches I, I did in the context of this POC. So, what to measure? So, I, I did a power consumption measurement for a 57 cluster only. So, I measured power consumption in two modes. 
this the way fast and this the way fast. This the way fast. So the speed of track setting is on demand governor, so the frequency is changed in real time. So the five OPPs, uh, last two OPPs are two OPPs, and the two more enabled for the CPU track to be able to set any frequencies in real time. And without the VFS, without the VFS, as you say, you respect governor and single OPP, OPP nominal. 1.5 gigahertz. So this is actually equivalent to CN without CPU frame. So the frequency is set from a bootloader and if we don't have the CPU frame, this frequency is constant during the whole cycle. So use cases. Uh, as you can see, most of the use cases are typical for Android audio playback, video playback, navigation, and etc. So, how to measure them? This slide describes actually what I measure and how I calculated power consumption. So, I use, for example, clock multimeter, this average option, such a convenient tool, I would say. So, power consumption, uh, so you can see the this is a table, so you can see the benefit, we have benefit for the first five use cases. So this is the real benefit and the Android playback, but so it, I had two Android, uh, I have two audio playback. One audio playback in Android, next audio playback in Azure Linux. So the, this playback is the winner, so you can see benefit more than 30 uh, percent. So this is benefit why because uh, low OPT I used during this use cases. So but with navigation with navigation we have we have a drawback. Drawback because high OPT I use it. It's a heavy use case. So next Boot time. So boot time is just quite important things. It, uh, so nobody wants, for example, uh, nobody wants to wait for a long time. Why the device, smartphone, and laptop get is booted? So, so I measure boot time, and uh, so I com compare it uh, with turbo frequency and. Uh, without on nominal frequency. So as you can see there is a benefit about eight uh, percent so comparing to the nominal frequency. Uh, H3 SOC has highest OPP highest triple frequency 1.7 years but M3 SOC has uh, one dot eight yeah, yeah. so I expect more benefit on an MGSC. So I expect it would be more than eight percent. So improvement is input. So this improvement was proposed in cell mailing list. So um, it is supposed to affect not only CPI basis or SMI basis to be correct, but on but the whole system. So currently the decision about the frequency change is made by Xen exclusively. But uh, Xen scheduling the CPU doesn't know much about the gas, about the gas internals. Uh, all Xen sees is uh, wait for interrupts, traps, deeper calls, but uh, Guess can track the actual utilization of the CPU, but Xen uh, doesn't see such granular information. So therefore Xen needs additional input from Guess to make a proper decision on the frequency that the CPU should run with. So the idea is that Guess could provide some input to Xen, for example by signaling OPP change request up to Xen. And send then uh, could 
beep, beep this request up and add a bunsen. So probably we would need some uh, combined approach. So this is this also was proposed by some community guys. So first, tell them about the power management strategies for use for certain gas. So different gas can be treated differently. RT gas, real-time gas in us, in one way, non-real-time gas in another way, infotainment gas in third way. So second, allow some gas based on policy, of course, to signal or to exchange request to them. Sam takes this into account, but it may decide to not act immediately on it because it is going to schedule another VCPU, for example. So, and third, have some way for actually realizing certain OPP. Uh, maybe via SCMI or SCPI client uh, like this POC does or in another way. So, two possible options with guest input. Discontinue of previous idea. So, first, SEN doesn't uh, have CPU prep logic at all. So, SEN doesn't measure PCPU utilization. So, then it collects OPP change request from guest. After that, it makes a decision based on this request and some policy. And it's finished, it signals final OPP change request to the SCP. Second option. Then it has to be recorded. It measures PCP utilization, like right now. In addition, it can collect, it can collect DTS change request. After that, it makes decision based on both. It is your point and yes request. After that, it sends final OPP change request to SCP. I think that the first option is uh, more clear and more simple, but uh, anyway, it is, it is discussable, so we have, we have two possible modes. So I think it works to to make a simple poke to POC to, to, to try it out and to see the re real benefit from, from, from the both. So it is discussable. So interesting thing was proposed by Andre Pejuara is how guests will signal OPP change request to them. So how? Extra PV parallelization protocol needed or don't know needed. So, SMC trigger mail, triggered mailbox solution. So, use SMC mailbox to pro for providing virtual SCPI or SCMI services to guests. So, mailbox building allows using HVC for triggering the services and then could pick this request up and X upon them. So how it is supposed to work? Then creates a virtual SCPI DT node for guest and uh, use SMC mailbox with HVC method. So after that, uh, HVC handlers in then redirect this OPP change request to CPU frag port. This is simple. Goals. Goals are obvious. No extra PV protocol. Platform agnostic for guests. So while making all guest requests ending up in CN. Simple and clear flow. So this picture demonstrates how it would look like. So this is the link. Uh, so you can see you can see patches for Vizen and for the firmware I modified. So this is the link. This is my mail. 
you can mail me regarding that any questions so thank you questions uh, i would suggest to take the question outside after because the other group started 15 minutes ago so we are quite late compared to the other time we got that the same. yeah great work thank you any other question Uh, I would like to ask that your SOC support the poor CPU, CPU break or based on cluster CPU break? Because some SOC does not support CPU free routines based on poor CPU. They could only change break based on cluster. Uh, okay, so I understand the question. Uh, so, as for Erkar Generation 3 board, uh, Different frequency on each port are not allowed. So all ports inside the cluster share the clock and the voltage. This is SOC. But coding in CERN allows to deal with different clusters and different clocks on each port. So this CPU track PSC was right in a way to be able to deal with if different frequencies you used on different cores. Include the symbol in your CPU uh, symbol, temperature, temperature. Yeah. Uh, it would be better to leave temperature to the firmware because uh, if uh, firmware measure temperature, for example, and if uh, the temperature limit is running out, it just not set high OPP or use a secure interrupt to trigger when temperature uh, reaches the threshold and firmware to uh, scale down the frequency. So uh, I'm not sure it is a good idea to put temperature to CERN. So this is personally my opinion. Can I stop you guys, otherwise the time is getting off your colleague. I mean, we have enough.